Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Eva Nenadic. Eva holds a PhD in communication science and studies media pluralism in the context of content curation, ranking, and moderation policies of online platforms. She is affiliated uh, to the Center for Media Pluralism and Freedom of the European University Institute, where she coordinates and supervises the implementation of the Media Pluralism Monitor as regards political independence. She also takes part in, in the European Digital Media Observatory, where she conducts research and analysis on disinformation, and she teaches courses in media policy and computational propaganda at the Faculty of Political Science of the Zagreb University. Prior to her, her academic work, Eva worked with a number of media in Croatia as a journalist, editor, and producer. Okay, Eva, you know about your challenge, telling us how to fix an element included or omitted in the Media Freedom Act. Thank you very much for this uh, nice introduction and thank you for the possibility to speak about the European Media Freedom Act, which I think is an extremely important piece of legislation that we are seeing now being discussed and hopefully also being adopted at the European level. Um, I clearly remember from the presentation of the proposal when the Vice President of the European Commission said that this is a proposal for the... Um, for the challenging times in which we live, and really we are witnessing more and more challenges for media freedom and uh, journalists and the media in Europe. So not only in terms of their sustainability and the economical side or the economic side of the media business, but also in terms of professionalism and media freedom. And I think for me, one of the most interesting parts of the European Media Freedom Act proposal is Article 17, or a so-called special treatment for media in content moderation by very large online platforms. So the idea is that the idea of this article is that uh, commercial online platforms who are largely without editorial responsibility should not be allowed to supervise and especially to remove content originating from the media who do have editorial responsibility and they do need to adhere to European and national laws as well as they should work by journalistic principles. So this idea has been around for a while. It's not a new thing. First, we saw this discussion in the process of adopting the Digital Services Act. So back then there was a very lively discussion around the amendments seeking to introduce so-called media exemption. Those amendments back then were not adopted and the media exemption did not become part of the DSA. One of the biggest fears and challenges related to those proposals was that such an exemption may be abused by bad actors who spread myths and disinformation and therefore it may undermine other aspects of DSA, especially those requiring risk assessment and risk mitigation, including the risk of disinformation. However, the core idea for regaining, let's put it this way, more balance between those who produce content with editorial responsibility and those who distribute it without such responsibility remain prominent. So now in the proposal for European Media Freedom Act, we have Article 17, which can simply be described as providing a special treatment for media in content moderation by very large online platforms. And very large online platforms is, again, a definition that comes from the Digital Services Act. The proposal is now more narrow than it was in the DSA, so it doesn't provide a full exemption, but rather a special treatment for the media in very problematic cases that would usually result in content removal or, for example, account suspension. So basically, we could describe the core of the current Article 17 as notification before takedown. So concretely, according to the proposal, Article 17 first requires very large online platforms to provide the functionality for the media organizations to declare themselves as media service providers with editorial responsibility, editorial independence from member state and uh, third countries, and as being a subject 
to regulatory, co-regulatory and self-regulatory mechanisms governing widely recognized editorial standards. So basically in this current form, it rests on self-reporting. When a very large online platform decides to block or remove media content on the grounds that such content is incompatible with its terms and conditions, but is not co uh, contributing to a systemic risk, which again is uh, defined in the Digital Services Act. And again, whether this contributes to a systemic risk is still a decision that the platform makes. So again, platforms keep some, some kind of uh, power of deciding on this, uh, in this process still. Uh, but in this case, very large online platforms, they need to take all possible measures to communicate the reason for suspending content to the media before the suspension takes effect. So basically they need to notify or inform the media before they take down their content, according to the current proposal. They also need to ensure that uh, when there are complaints by declared media service providers, that those are processed and decided upon with priority and without undue delay. And also the article envisions a possibility for a dialogue between the media and online platforms in cases of frequent disputes or removals, including sometimes with an involvement of the European Board for Media Services, which is a new body established within EMFA proposal. Uh, and even if the involvement of European Board for Media Services is just for notification of the outcome of such exchange. The article further requires transparency by very large online platforms, so it requires them to publicly report and on an annual basis information on removals and suspensions and the reasons for such actions. And the European Commission explains this article primarily as seeking to offer a protection against the unjustified removal by very large online platforms to media content produced according to professional standards. So even if we think that the core idea of this article is good, there are some issues that need to be considered further. And there are many issues, I think, but here I'm putting forward only three also considering the limited time we have. And I'm sure this discussion and different forms of proposals will go further in the following weeks and months. So the first point I want to put forward is the fact that this article Article 17 in the EMFA proposal applies a narrow definition of content moderation. So considering only removals and suspensions, but not, for example, downranking. And downranking is often a strategy to tackle misinformation and disinformation. It has an impact on content visibility and findability. And in case of the media content, this has an impact on their business model. So applying this narrow definition can be a good thing, as it makes Article 17 easier to enforce, but it does not resolve the problem of platforms supervising the distribution and visibility of the media or editorial content. The second point I want to put forward is that in the current form of Article 17, it applies only to media organizations and not to individual journalists and freelancers. Here again, I think we have a definitional problem, how to define media or media service providers in, today, in today's context in which um, a lot of important public service journalism comes from beyond traditional formats of journalism that we are used to. Of course, uh, if this article would broaden its scope uh, to include individual journalists or new forms of journalism, such as bloggers, for example, it would also probably broaden uh, potential for it being misused by bad actors who spread various forms of myth and disinformation. And clearly this remains, uh, remains to be a challenge. And the third point that uh, I would like to put forward and perhaps the key issue that we've seen in the discussion around media exemption or the special treatment for media and content moderation by very large online platforms is how to safeguard that only editorially responsible media service providers benefit from this special treatment and how to make sure that it is not being abused by bad actors. So for example, hyperpartisan and state controlled media, propagandistic media and other purveyors of mis and disinformation. The challenge 
I think will be to set up an effective uh, and media freedom compliance system for validating if the media who self-declare as editorially responsible and independent are indeed operating in that way. So also being fully transparent about their ownership uh, structures and respecting professional standards and editorial autonomy. Uh, maybe just to conclude, I would like to, to stress, to highlight that I do believe that this could be a moment to reconsider and strengthen the system of media and journalistic self-regulation in Europe. Um, thank you, Eva. I think, um, first of all, thank you for introducing the article uh, in, 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 in such a detailed way, because I think it shows all of the layers that are included in the article and of each layer that you add is obviously a safeguard that the Commission tried to put in the article, but each definition or each scope uh, definition creates a problem, as you uh, mentioned, in the sense of maybe not having the right definition or having to make it better. Uh, also, in terms of the shortcomings uh, of the article and the need for more safeguards, I think that will be part of the work probably that uh, the European Parliament and the Council now will have to, to uh, undertake. And um, as always with any piece of legislation, I guess uh, the devil uh, is in the detail and now the detail will have to be uh, refined. Thank you so much for contributing to the discussion and let's hope that they fix uh, Article 17 the right way. Thank you. Thank you for the good work on this.